Joining me now at the very latest on the Trump administration, both here and abroad, is Tara Palmieri, White House correspondent for Politico. Good to see you, Tara. Thanks for having me. All right. So what does Secretary of State Tillerson need to do to accomplish uh, for the Trump administration with this high stakes visit? A miracle would be if he actually convinces the Russian uh, government to step away from their support for Assad and actually stop helping them militarily. Would that happen? Probably not. More realistic is that he's going to enumerate the um, the differences that the U.S. has with Putin on how to deal with Syria and Iran. Um, he'll make known the fact that they that the U.S. will not stand for the use of chemical weapons on uh, the Syrian people by Assad. Um, he may go so far as to say that the U.S. will support the removal of Assad um, as leader of the Syrian people. So. What we should expect is probably just a lot of diplomatic talk. It would be amazing if he was able to bring them over onto uh, the U.S. side, but I think that's a little hopeful, especially without a, a real meeting with Putin. Right. Um, well, reportedly, the Secretary of State told Ukrainian officials that the United States will not allow a package deal when it comes to a serious solution and the situation in Ukraine. So, so what is up mm. for negotiation, and what does Russia achieve with all of this? I think that's an interesting take um, because it seemed that the uh, Trump administration didn't seem to have Ukraine as a priority. Mm. Um, so to hear that it's a package deal means that they are starting to acknowledge this um, issue, the annexation of a country by Russia and their uh, aggression on the Baltic region. So um, I think this is a step forward towards uh, more conventional uh, conservative views on foreign policy. And um, it, will, it shows that the U.S. isn't willing to isolate certain, uh, certain situations and that they want Russia to comply on all, on all sides of, of our um, take on foreign policy. Interesting to see if they, if, if they also focus on Iran in this meeting as well. Yeah, I mean, I, w we've been talking about Iran all morning. I think the narrative, mm -hmm. as it's played out across the media, certainly because the Secretary of State is in Moscow, is the relationship between Russia and the United States. But whatever mm -hmm. gets decided for Syria is going to have to include Iran. And mm -hmm. without them, and that means Hezbollah, which a lot of people, again, are not talking about right now, uh, can mm -hmm. any kind of lasting solution come about in Syria if we don't talk to the Iranians about their role? I, I think it would be very difficult um, to do that. And I think that the Trump administration has, is, is having a real test right now. Uh, their position on Syria has done 360 in the past week, from saying that Assad should stay to Assad should be removed to now saying maybe there's something in between. This is a time where they're really being tested and the relationship of the U.S.-Russian uh, relationship is being tested. It was interesting to hear Eric Trump say earlier this morning that the strike on Syria was a sign that Trump has not been complicit with the Russians in any way and that he is willing to be tough with them. So I think we're going to see the evolution of the Trump doctrine, which has been changing and perhaps will change even more as they get into these talks and find out what are the red lines and what are to that point that you just made there, Tara, does this, will this sort of quiet the rumors that there has been a more friendly, let's say, engagement with Russia in the past, uh, the fact that the president is uh, trying to say to the Russians that, look, this is the way it's going to be, this is the way the Trump doctrine is going to operate in the region? I think it will temporarily um, until you get more news of members in the uh, members of the administration, like uh, son-in-law Jared Kushner, testifying. <laughs> if that becomes a public testimony, um, I think the more that the investigation actually has any sort of revelations that show real complicity between the campaign and the Russian um, government or senior administration officials, I think that that will bring it back up. But for today. I think it showed a real split between the Trump administration and Russia, and it's a good um, it's a good news story for the day. But we'll see how that evolves. We certainly will. Finally, Tara, I just want to ask you about these reports of infighting amongst the Trump administration. Uh, we just showed pictures mm -hmm. of Jared Kushner there. Uh, the mm -hmm. fact that it's been reported that Mr. Kushner and Steve Bannon do not get along. 
Mm -hmm. What are you hearing about that? What is the reaction from the administration? I know they're probably going to sort of close up ranks and say everything's fine here, nothing to see. But there have been a lot of reports that there's a lot of infighting. And if you know anything about Mr. Trump, the president, uh, you know that he sometimes likes to see infighting amongst the people that report to him, sort of see who has uh, his ear. Right, to see who has the best ideas, see whose argument wins the uh, right. fight. But um, on Friday, the, the two sat down with uh, Chief of Staff Ryan Priebus. They tried to work through their differences. Um, there was a news report that Breitbart was told that they should not be writing any more stories critical of Jared Kushner. Hmm. Wonder who that comes from. Right. Um, <laughs> Steve Bannon, who used to run Breitbart. And I think that this is something that's plagued the Trump administration for a while, not just inside the White House, but you're also seeing it in terms of their foreign policy with different um, messaging from Tillerson and Nikki Haley this weekend. Nikki Haley said we have to remove Assad. Tillerson said we have to focus on ISIS and wouldn't go that far. Um, so you know there are so many different factions, which also just is a reflective of the different factions within the Republican Party as well. But. Trump clearly is willing to open to li listen to all sides and put all of them and try to make them work together. So we'll see how that uh, how that works out for him and, and if it if we continue to just keep seeing inconsistencies because of these factions on how they communicate publicly. All right, we'll have to see Tara Palmieri as always. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.